All right, so I'm streaming live now. Let me go get the YouTube link. I'm going to share, copy the link, put that into Discord for you guys. And uh, you might as well all just watch on YouTube uh, right now. You might get a echo or something, but I can't, uh, I can't stream otherwise, I don't think, on this. It's not set up properly. All right. <clears throat> Let me know if you guys are able to view that on YouTube. <clears throat> YouTube works? All right, cool. All right, so uh, we are going to talk about conditionals today, and we're going to talk about lying. So um, go back to my... Whoo, this is why I like having two different monitors, so I don't have to do this. Um, all right, well, uh, just let me know if you guys can see everything. I, I guess I'm going to stop just checking on that left and right. Um, let's see here. Screen sketch, sketch pad. All right. There we go. Oh, that's cool. Can I delete it? Trash. There we go. Okay. Cool. All right, so let's let's talk about... Let's talk about what it means to lie. Um, so this this word gets uh, tossed around a lot, but uh, trust me, there is there is a lot of re relevance to uh, to what. Uh, let's just make sure everyone's able to see it. Infinity mirrors viewing is working. All right, cool. Um, so how many, maybe I'll just split screen this. Yeah, I can do that. Split screen that. And where did my where did my sketch pad go? There we are. Sketchpad. All right. Can I have... No, you're only full screen? Fantastic. Well done, Microsoft. Mm. Let's see if OneNote's working now. It wasn't earlier. It's going to make for some exciting streaming. Start taking notes. Click. Let's make a new note. Nope, can't create your notebook. Check your internet connection. My internet connection is fine. OneNote, it is you that is terrible. Uh, all right, let's try OneNote 2016. Let's see if this will. All right, so let's go with 212121. There we go. And will you let me draw? All right, cool. Good enough. Can I go split screen? Barely. Uh, let's see. How do I turn off the sidebar? In there we go. Not really. I feel like a peasant being on this little laptop here. Okay, well, as it is, okay. lying. Okay. So, uh, when when we say that somebody is lying, we typically mean that they are engaged in intentional deception. Right, so lying is more than just being wrong. It's it's more than may not sync correctly because offline files is enabled. Uh, could you at least make the note go away? No. All right, we'll put in one drive. Sure, why not? All right. Thank you for some fantastic streaming here. 
And if you think I'm just starting this now, no, I've been doing this since about four o'clock in the morning and it's 10 now. Are you supposed to be seeing something? Yeah. Uh, let me pin the uh, YouTube link up top. There. There we go. It's pinned. Fantastic. All right. Are you supposed to be able to see the lecture on YouTube? I sure hope so. Yeah, I sure hope so. All right. Great. Cool. Okay, you know, I give up on this. New notebook. Notebook name. CSI1. Great. Mouse is invisible. Oh, what happened to the other one? Okay, anyhow. Whatever. I... Uh, okay. Flying. There we go. More than just being wrong. Okay. So with uh, with lying, there's sort of an intentional uh, deception. So there, there's two parts to lying. There is the um, saying something wrong. And it must be intentional. Okay. So if I were to tell you something honestly, but I just happened to get it wrong, for example, um, if I told you that our our country's government started in 1776, uh, and, I, and I honestly meant that, that wouldn't be lying to you. I would be wrong because our government didn't start until the signing of the Constitution many years later. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be lying. You guys understand? <clears throat> so, um, like, certainly I will make mistakes all the time in this class. You know, I might say the wrong date or the wrong name or something like that. It happens. Um, but uh, it, there's a combination of both saying something that is factually untrue, saying something, it's not just saying wrong, because wrong can mean a lot of things. Let's say fact, truly untrue. Untrue. Combined with intentionality. Okay. And so what does this have to do with uh, what we've been talking about, the logic and logic gates and all this uh, highfalutin nonsense that we've been talking about. Well, it's because we are going to be talking today about uh, if and then statements. Also known as conditionals. Conditionals are used all throughout computer science. Uh, so computer science um, is, you know, you're, you're going to use conditionals literally, you know, all the time when you're writing programs. Uh, all the intelligence of a computer program comes about through a conditional, through an if-then if statement. So if uh, the user clicks the mouse, then shoot a rocket launcher. If the user, uh, you know, chooses to drink some coffee, then... Mm. Restore their energy, that kind of thing. All of the intelligence, all of the interactivity in a computer science program is from a conditional, from an if-then statement. But if-then statements are also used elsewhere, like uh, let's say contracts, right? They're used in argumentation. They're used in logic which is uh, the topic of your next uh, textbook reading. Your next textbook reading is going to be uh, continuing on uh, truth tables and things like that. And you will see uh, the logic behind implications is another word for them. 
implication. Implication is another name for it. So these things are used everywhere. So let's let's see let's uh, let's maybe look at contracts. Okay. So if I tell you uh, if you if you let's say um, if you build a fence for me, I will pay you four thousand dollars. Okay, so that is an if-then statement. That is a conditional. That is an implication. In logic, we would write this x implies y. So x would be you building a fence for me. Y would be me paying you four thousand dollars. So, uh, is that a lie? Can can that just by itself be a lie? If you build a fence for me, I will pay you four thousand dollars. Like, in, you sign it and I sign it. Is that can that be wrong? Can that be a lie? Can it be deception? I mean, maybe I'm not planning on paying you the four thousand dollars, but you know. Um, what do you guys think? No? All right. Yeah, it's, it, it, it can't be a lie until um, until something happens. And that something would be if you did actually build the fence for me. And I did not pay you the 40K. So if you, true, if you built a fence for me, and then I'm like, uh, go pound sand. You know, I'm not paying you. Sucks to be you. That is the only time a implication can be a lie. So if the uh, first part uh, is true and the second part is false, then this is a big, fat, stinking lie. Okay? Do you understand? What if uh, what if uh, you built a fence for me and I did pay you the 40K, the 40K, the 4K? Then uh, did I lie to you? If you built the fence for me and I paid you as promised, is is that a lie? Did I Did I lie to you? Yes, I did. <laughs> if if you did the work and I paid you for the work that I said you would, did I lie? No, no, I didn't lie. All right. Um. Okay. Here's now. Here's a trickier question. So, so let's scroll over a little bit here. Uh, there we go. So, uh, so if you build the fence for me, this is X. X is building the fence. This is Y, me paying you. Um, and this is, you know, did I lie? Yes. Yes, I lied. Okay. And maybe I should just put it as, did I tell the truth? So that way we don't have to deal with the double negative or something. Okay. So um, if, uh, if you build the fence for me and I didn't pay you, then I did not tell the truth. If you build the fence for me and I did pay you, then I did tell the truth. But there's two other circumstances here that we didn't consider. All right. The first circumstance is you didn't do the work for me and I didn't pay you. So let's say we sign a contract. Uh, hey, uh, if you come over to my house, you build a fence, I'll pay you $4,000. And you don't show up. You don't build the fence. Did I lie to you? If I if I say if I offer you money to come over here and build my fence, and you don't build the fence, and and I don't pay you for it, obviously, did I did I lie to you? No. So the truth of that is also true. Now here's the tricky part. This is the part that uh, this is the part that always gets people. Let's say you didn't build the fence and I just decided to give you $4,000 anyway. I say, if you uh, if you build the fence for me, I'll give you 4K. And you're like, you know what? I'm busy right now. I'm not going to build the fence. And I'm like, you know what? You're a nice guy. Here's 4K. Did I lie to you? Did I say anything about what would happen if you didn't build the fence? No, I didn't. So uh, that's actually also the truth. So the only time something can be a lie, the only time something can be a lie is if I promise to pay you um, 
$4,000 if you build a fence, you build a fence and I don't pay you. That's the only time that it will be, the truth of that implication will be false. Okay. The only time uh, it's a lie is if I make a promise, you do your part of the promise, but then I don't, I don't do mine. And, and it's this part here that's tricky because of the way the English language works. We talked about this before, right? With uh, or, like if I say, do you want to go out to see a movie or do you want to go to the beach? And you say, yes. You know, that's usually, um, <laughs> that's usually not what we mean, right? Like when we say, do you want to go get pizza or ice cream? When we stress that or, that means exclusive or. It means you can pick one or the other, but not both. So with, um, with this, the, uh, the tricky bit is when we say, if you do this for me, then that there's sometimes an if and only if thing implied. Okay. There's sometimes this notion that, uh, when you stress the if in English, we mean if and only if, for example, if I tell you, put that gun down or I'll shoot you, right? Put that gun down or I'll shoot you. So X would be, let's scroll down a little bit. X would be here. Let's scroll down a little bit again. Too much scrolling. So X would be put that gun down. Um, Let's actually put in in logic terms. If you don't put that gun down, I will shoot. You'll see this in uh, in movies, right? So X is like, if you don't put the gun down, and then the Y part is, I will shoot you. Okay. Uh, there's a famous scene in, uh, there's a famous scene in uh, RoboCop where uh, the uh, Ed 209, uh, they're doing a demonstration at a corporate board, and a guy picks up a gun and points it at the, the Ed 209, their, their new law enforcement robot. And the robot says, you know, put the gun down. You have 10 seconds to put the gun down or I'll shoot you. You know, something like that. And it and it starts counting down. And so the guy puts the gun down. And then the Ed 209 shoots him anyway. And what's funny is that that's actually um, perfectly logical for it to do. Because um, X is you don't put the gun down. So if you don't put the gun down, I'll shoot you. That's what the Ed 209 says, right? The Ed 209 is the big kind of like two-legged uh, robot with like the turret. There you go. That's the Ed 209 right there. You can sell that at Art Hop next time. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, let's see. Ed 209. This thing. So uh, there's a famous uh, famous scene in RoboCop, and uh, uh, you know basically it says you know if you trapped in an infinite loop, right? If you don't put that gun down, I'll shoot you. And so Mr. Kinney, Mr. Kinney puts his gun down and Ed 209 shoots him anyway. Now what's funny is that Ed 209 was not lying. He did not lie because let's, let's run through the logic on that, right? X, Y, and then was Ed 209 telling the truth, right? X implies Y. Uh, so X is you don't put the gun down. So Mr. Kinney did not not put the gun down. So X is false, and Y turned out to be true. You didn't build the fence, but I paid you money anyway. So he did put the gun down, but Ed 209 shot him anyway. So as it turns out, Ed 209 was not lying. And and this is uh, this is something that always trips people up because there's this implication, right? There's this implication that when I if I say if you don't put that gun down, I'm going to shoot you. There's an implication. There's a hidden you know assumption that if you do put the gun down, I won't shoot you, right? But I didn't say if and only if. You don't put the gun down. I just said, if you don't put the gun down, I'm going to shoot you. They put the gun down, I shoot you anyway. I didn't lie, right? The only the only thing the only thing I promised was that if you didn't put it down, I would shoot you, right? And so this is this is a classic scene 
Uh, you can look it up on your own time. The ED209 from uh, RoboComp. And uh, that's a, uh, it was uh, portrayed in uh, in South Park actually pretty well. The, uh, the the man who was killed in RoboCop, his name was Mr. Kinney. And uh, if you guys have ever seen South Park, uh, Kinney is the kid that died over and over again in the early seasons. And so Kenny went as um, Ed 209 for a Halloween episode, and then he got killed. So, um, okay, so do you guys understand that? Like, uh, th this is this is a very common this is a very common problem, right? Like, um, X uh, could be like if you clean your room, you know, Y would be, um, uh, then, then I'll take you to a Grizzlies game, real, a grill game, apparently, <laughs> a Grizzlies And so there's a hidden implication there that if you don't clean your room, you don't get to go, right? But here's the thing. Like, let's say you don't clean your room and your mom's like, all right, get in the car. We're going to a Grizzlies game anyway. A lot of kids would be like, wait, wait, wait. I thought you said if you clean your room, then I'll take you to the Grizzlies game. I, and the mom might say, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I didn't say what would happen if you don't clean your room. <laughs> Do you guys understand? Do you see how that runs contrary to, like, uh, how we, we we mean this in in English? A lot of times we'll put, like, a a stress on the word if, if you clean your room, then I will take you to a Grizzlies game, right? If you clean your room, then I will take you to a Grizzlies game. And typically when, when we say that, that means that um, if and only if, right? So it, it really means in, in logic, if and only if, which is represented uh, by this symbol. A normal implication, if then, is X implies Y. The if and only if is uh, done uh, is represented by a bidirectional arrow. Okay, and so the in English, in English, oftentimes we mean that if and only if you clean your room, will I take you to a Grizzlies game? So if you don't clean your room, you don't go to a Grizzlies game. If you do clean your room, you do get to go to a Grizzlies game. But in logic, logic and English sometimes have these um, areas where the English version doesn't match up with um, what we mean in logic, and so this is this is one of them. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's important to think of this in terms of like, is the person lying, right? So like if, if I ended up paying you money to, you know, if I, if I give you $4,000, even if you didn't make a offense for me, I didn't lie, right? Because I didn't say anything about what would happen if you didn't build a fence for me. Okay. Any questions about that? So if you say X implies Y, then the only time I can be lying is if the only time, uh, let's just go back over here. Uh, the only time I'd be lying is if um, you actually, if X happened and then Y didn't happen. That's the only time you're actually lying. And so there, there's two related, um, two related fallacies from this. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about fallacies um, more, a, a lot actually in this in this semester. Fallacies are a lot of fun, but there's there's a couple uh, very important formal fallacies that are based on this. And so, uh, so let's, let's go into those real fast. Um, okay. So let's, let's say that your mom told you this and let's get rid of that. If, if you clean up your room, then I'll take you to Grizzlies game. Let's say we know this is an absolute uh, truth. Your mom doesn't lie about it. And she says this is 100% said in stone. So you know that you're, let's say it's your friend's mom. Your friend's mom says uh, to, to your friend, uh, if you clean your room, then I'll take you to a Grizzlies game. And you see your friend at a Grizzlies game. And you conclude from that that he cleaned his room. Did you make a, did you make a fallacy? Did you make a mistake in reasoning? Let me, let me write that down. Uh, you see your friend. This is your friend's mom. Your friend's mom says this. Okay. And you see him. Uh, 
at the game the next day. Did he clean his room? So the mom promises if he cleans his room, he'll get to go to the Grizzlies game. Good job. Did he clean his room? So this is why contracts are so long and binding. You could have wiggle room around them. Yeah. For example, what if you make this promise uh, between you and a contractor that he'll do your fence and he doesn't show up? Well, it's actually going to hurt you, right? Because, um, you know, you might have a fence that's going to collapse or something like that, right? So, uh, a lot of times contracts will say, and then if this doesn't happen, if this milestone isn't met, then this happens, this penalty kicks in, things like that. You don't think it'll be a fallacy? Well, I, I didn't, I didn't conclude anything, right? I'm just asking you, did he clean his room? You, you know, your mom has promised that if he cleans his room, he'll, he'll go to a Grizzlies game. You see him at the Grizzlies game. So I'm asking you, you know, do you think, do you think he cleaned his room? And so, as it turns out, if you think that if you think that he cleaned his room, then you made a fallacy, which is called affirming the consequent. And this is a affirming the consequent, affirming the consequent. And so, the reason why this is a fallacy is that. If you look at the truth table up here for it, if you do see him at the Grizzlies game, it's possible that he did actually clean his room and it's possible that he did not clean his room. So if all you're basing this on is the fact that you see him at the Grizzlies game, you can't actually conclude that he cleaned his room because his mom told the truth in both cases, but it's possible she took him to the Grizzlies game anyway, right? And so it's possible he did clean his room and, and got to go to the game. And it's possible that he didn't clean his room but he pointed out the logical mistake that his mother had made, and the mother, being a uh, philosopher of logic, uh, said, bravo, son, you have earned your philosophy monocle today. And uh, and took him, to the, took him to the game anyway, right? Because she promised that if, if you clean your room, you get to go to the Grizzlies game. And he's like, I'm not going to clean my room because <laughs> I understand how logical implications work. And she would go, Bravo, bravo, here's your monocle. So, uh, yeah, and so if you conclude that he cleaned his room, then that is called a affirming the consequent fallacy. The, there is the antecedent, which is the antecedent, antecedent, which is the X part, and there's the consequent, which is the Y part. So if you say that you know that he cleaned his room because you saw him at the game, that is a affirming the consequent fallacy. And uh, this fallacy I put on every midterm and final. And students always get it wrong. Always get it wrong. Uh, I remember on one midterm I put, I put because uh, it's multiple choice, right? I put um, affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent, which are uh, which is the other one I'm going to go over in, in, in a second. Um, uh, I put on, I think, I think almost every question and literally like, I think one of them actually was that fallacy, but students guessed it like 25, 30% of the time, like, cause they just didn't understand it. Right. And so they just kept guessing it over and over again when it was clearly not the right answer. Right. Like there's, uh, you know, there's fallacies like ad hominem, like, well, I think your your argument's wrong because you're a jerk. You know, like it's clearly it's clearly like an ad hominem fallacy, which again we'll talk about fallacies later in the semester. But students like uh, I don't know, affirming the consequent, boom. 
had nothing to do with it. And and so Sudas just kept on uh, on doing these these few fallacies. So if you uh, uh, affirm the consequent, or if you deny the antecedent, um, denying the antecedent means um, it, it's it's this one. So if you say because he didn't clean his room, which is false here, right? Because he didn't clean his room, I know that he didn't go to the Grizzlies game. That's actually a fallacy as well, because if if you know that he didn't clean his room. You actually don't know whether or not um, he got to go to the Grizzlies game. He might have gone. He might. There was nothing in, in what his mom said that said you can't go if, if you don't clean your room. And so he didn't clean his room. So, so if you say, because I know my friend didn't clean his room, I know he couldn't go to the Grizzlies game. That is a denying the antecedent uh, fallacy. So let me uh, write that down here. So there's affirming the consequent. And there's another fallacy called denying the antecedent. I put these on every midterm and final and students get them wrong over and over again. So uh, let's see if there's questions over here. I want a philosophy monocle. Wait, what's a fallacy again? A fallacy is when somebody makes an argument and uh, the argument doesn't hold together. So um, there's formal fallacies and there are informal fallacies. So a formal fallacy is when the logic itself just doesn't work. In, in both these cases, these are both formal fallacies. The, uh, this is a formal fallacy. The, uh, literally, they're making a logic in error. Uh, they're, they're, they're making an error in logic, I should say. Um, where basically, uh, you have a truth table like this, and they say, well, because I know x is false, y must be false. That's just wrong, <laughs> right? Because if the mom was telling the truth, if the X part is false, the Y part could either be true or false. So that is just a error in logic. You cannot conclude that the Y part must be false because the X part is false. And likewise, if you know the Y part is true, in other words, you saw him at the game, you cannot conclude that the X part is true. You cannot conclude that he actually did his homework or cleaned his room or whatever. Because um, it's also possible he didn't do it and his mom took him anyway and had pity on him and took him anyway. So. If you, if you derive anything from X being false, or if you derive any truth from Y being true, then you are going to make an error in judgment. So let's, let's give another example of that. Uh, let's say that, um, let's say X is if it rains, X is if it rains, and Y is I will bring my umbrella. Okay, let's say this is a hard and fast rule. I'm not lying to you guys at all about this. In real life, I actually don't usually wear an umbrella. I just get wet. It doesn't bother me. Um, but let's say this is uh, some other person, not me. And they have a hard and fast rule that says, if it rains, I will bring my umbrella to work or school or whatever. Right? So, um, so the next day, uh, you see me at work. And you're like... You're like, um, I see you have an umbrella. Therefore, it must be raining, you say. Is this a fallacy or not? And if it is a fallacy, which fallacy is it? So... There's a hard and fast rule. Your friend Cecil Rhodes DeMille sounds like somebody who'd wear an umbrella and probably have a philosophy monocle as well. He has a hard and fast rule that if it rains, he takes his umbrella with him to work. The next day you see him at work. He's got his umbrella with him. And you say, ah, I see you have an umbrella. Therefore, it must be raining outside. I don't even need to check to see if it's raining. I can, I can tell it's raining because you have an umbrella and you have a hard and fast rule that says if it rains, if it rains outside, you will bring your umbrella. Is that a fallacy? And if it's a fallacy, is it affirming the consequent or is it denying the antecedent? It is a fallacy. Good. And so, um, so you are uh, affirming the consequent.
is is the thing you're saying because you have an umbrella i can tell that it is raining because why is true because y is true because y is true i therefore know that x is true but look it's possible that y is true and x is not true right so that is a that is a fallacy um you cannot conclude that he uh that just because he has an umbrella it's raining it's possible that he just decided to you know take a extra umbrella you know to work today just in case or something some other reason you know he doesn't he didn't say anything about what happens if it's sunny he didn't say if it's sunny i won't bring my umbrella right he just says when it's rain when it rains i bring my umbrella and so um the way the english language works it works against us in this case uh, because just due to the, the way the english language works is that typically when we say something like that and we stress if it rains then that means if and only if it rains it's sunny i don't bring but in logic it doesn't work that way uh this uh your, your friend cecil rhodes cecil rhodes demille that sounds like somebody would have an umbrella <laughs> cecil They would make it one last name. Um, sounds like somebody would bring an umbrella. So all he did was say, when it rains, it, he brings his umbrella. He didn't say anything about what happens when it's sunny. Okay. So um, uh, let's do another one. I see. It is raining outside. Therefore, I know Cecil Rhodes DeMille will have an umbrella today. He hasn't shown up for work yet, but uh, I can I can just tell by the fact that it's raining outside. We have this atmospheric river coming through and it's raining constantly because i know that it's raining outside i know that cecil will bring his umbrella today so is this a, a valid argument that i've made or is it a fallacy i don't know why i'm speaking with a british accent it probably has something to do with talking about cecil rhodes de mill is this a valid argument Cecil has a hard and fast rule that when it rains, he'll bring an umbrella. I see that it's raining. Therefore, I deduce that he will have his umbrella. And race. Umbrella today, like Rihanna. Okay. It is. Uh, can you move the screen up, please? Uh, whee! Yeah, I can't. This is why I like having two screens to do my lectures. Thing's almost done rebuilding itself. Uh, yeah, this is a valid. This is a valid argument here, and uh, probably sound also. We'll talk about what that means later, but that is a valid and sound argument. I think um, this is a. He's affirming the consequence. So this is a affirming affirming the consequent consequent fallacy. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a, this is deductive reasoning deduction. It's not the kind of deduction that Sherlock Holmes does, which is not actually deductive reasoning. Okay, so let's uh, go over a couple more using the example of Cecil Rhodes DeMille, I guess. All right, so um, I see you did not bring your umbrella today, Cecil. Therefore, I know 
it is not raining. So is this uh, valid? Is it fallacious? What is it? <clears throat> so Cecil Rhodes DeMille has a rule that says that every time it rains, he brings his umbrella to work. You see him at work, he does not have his umbrella. Therefore, you know it's not raining because he has a hard and fast rule. Every time it rains, he brings his umbrella. So if he doesn't have his umbrella, well, you know it's not raining. Fallacy, 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 fallacy. All wrong. This is actually a valid argument. This is a 100% valid argument. I told you, not fallacious. Because the only time when, uh, the only time that uh, he is telling the truth and he doesn't have his umbrella is when it is not raining outside. He has a hard and fast rule. 100% of the time, when it is raining, he will have his umbrella. So if he does not have his umbrella, you know, without a doubt, it is not raining. Because if it was raining, he would have his umbrella, and he doesn't. So via that reasoning, uh, that is actually a perfectly valid form of argumentation. Okay, so this is a valid argument. <laughs> It is a hard and fast rule. 100% of the time that it rains outside, he will have his umbrella on him. He does not have his umbrella on him. Therefore, it is impossible for it to be raining. That is actually a valid argument. Okay. And let's do one more. Let's see which ones did I do already. It is a sunny day, sunny day. So Cecil will not have his umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, A. Yep. Is this valid or fallacious? It is a sunny day, so Cecil will not have his umbrella. Hmm. No, all of you are wrong, except for the people that said fallacious. This is a fallacious argument. Fallacious. This is called denying denying the antecedent. Antecedent. So denying the antecedent fallacy. It is a sunny day. Therefore, I know Cecil will not have his umbrella. It is a sunny day. X is false. X is false. Therefore, I know. No, you can't know if Cecil will have his umbrella or not. If it's a sunny day, he might bring his umbrella just because he's trying to move his stock around, or he might not have it. If it's a sunny day, X is false. X is it's sunny. Y is Cecil will bring his umbrella. If it's a sunny day, you cannot know if he will bring his umbrella to work or not. It is uh, you are not um, able to make that deduction in a valid circumstance. Maybe most of the time he won't, but some of the time he might be like, you know what? I've got a lot of umbrellas at, at work right now. I'm going to just, uh, you know, pick one up and walk around and take it back to my house. So, hope you guys can see that the English language does not always uh, work, right? You have to, you actually have to pay a little bit of attention to the to the logic of the matter. Um, because the way that English works is we, we typically use, we typically use if 
as if and only if. So if it's sunny, then we know that Cecil will not have his umbrella. As it turns out, though, uh, in logic, sunny implies um, uh, nothing. <laughs> Sorry, not not x. If it, x is raining, right? So not x. It could be either f or uh, you know, it could either be true or false, right? So if it's a sunny day, we don't know if he's going to bring his umbrella or not. We have no no basis to assume that he will bring an umbrella or not. So you'll notice that two of these types of argument are valid. So this one is valid. Where's my mouse? There we go. So this one's valid. This one's valid. And two of them are fallacious. This one's fallacious. And I don't know where the other one went. Uh, scroll down a little bit. And then this one is fallacious. And the source of the fallacy comes about from the truth table. So the truth table for x implies y. The truth table for x implies y, assuming that the person is telling the truth, like they're actually telling the truth um, about bringing an umbrella. Um, if you know that the antecedent is false, you can't deduce anything about the consequent. And if you know the consequent is true, you can't you can't deduce anything about the antecedent. Okay. The only thing you really know is that if uh, he does not have his umbrella, then you know that it is sunny. And you know that if it's raining, you know that if it's raining, he must have his umbrella. The two, those are the two things you know. That rain implies an umbrella, and you know that no umbrella implies no rain. Those are the only two things you can know. So if it's raining, you know he has his umbrella, and if you don't see an umbrella, that means there's no rain. You cannot deduce anything from the other two circumstances. If I tell you it's sunny outside, is he taking his umbrella or not? I don't know. Because he might take his umbrella on a rainy day, he might take it on a sunny day, don't know. Likewise, if uh, you see that he has his umbrella, it could, because he could bring it on a sunny day or a rainy day, it doesn't tell you anything otherwise. The only two things that tell you something are if it's raining, then he must have an umbrella. And if you see him without an umbrella, then you know that it must not be raining. And that is uh, something called modus, modus tonins and modus Collins or Toyens, I've heard it pronounced, um, are the two valid forms of, of deduction. And then the two forms of um, fallacy are affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. So those are the four, those are the four possible types of arguments that we just ran through down here. We just ran through the four different types of arguments you can make about it. And uh, two of them are fallacious and two of them are valid. And it's really important you guys um, understand that. Not just for this class, not just for um, computer science, but um, in general, you know, you'll people will make bad arguments a lot. Or they'll make, you know, um, do bad reasoning a lot, especially on social media. And um, formal fallacies aren't quite as common, honestly, as informal ones. Ad hominem is very common. Well, why should I listen to what you have to say? You support the other political party. <laughs> it's like, well, that doesn't change if their argument's right or wrong. You know, it's just, they, they're a member of the other political party. Um, those kinds of things are very common on on. Facebook, but people do make formal fallacies all the time as well. Um, and especially if you're going to go into law, you have to think about uh, those sorts of things. And in general, even if you don't go into law, you're probably going to have the law uh, run into you at some point also in your in your careers. Everybody has to have, I think, at least a passing familiarity with the law. And also, like, if you, like again, like if, even if you're just like hiring a contractor to do your fence, it's like, all right, well... <sighs> I hired him and he didn't do anything. So can I hire someone else now? But then if he shows up like a year from now and does it, I'll be on the hook for $4,000, you know? So, hmm, 
you know, maybe I should put in like a, a, a term in the contract saying, you know, he has to begin work within four months or something. Right. And so when you um, when you understand logic, then you're going to not expose yourself as much to um, making a mistake. Mistakes in law can be very, very expensive. My most expensive mistake, um, legally speaking, was half a million dollars out of my pocket, which was a uh, <coughs> big oof, as the kids of today say. Um, it was a uh, circumstance. I, I did some work for a school district, and basically it said, if the grant funds, then I will be paid $500,000, is what it boils down to. It's more than that, but not more money, but just there was more to the story than that. But that, that was basically the, the thing. If this grant funds that I'm writing for you, then you'll pay me half a million dollars. And um, and it funded. And they didn't pay me the half a million dollars. So I'm like, ah, you lied. So uh, as it turned out, the school district had hired another grant writer uh, on top of me. So they wanted to double their odds of having this very large grant. It was a $5 million grant. They wanted to double their, their odds of it funding. So they actually hired two people to write the same grant for them in two completely different ways. And it turned out both of them funded. And so <clears throat> they uh, apparently arbitrarily decided to go with the other group instead of me. And so I sat down with my lawyer and I'm like, do I have a case? And he said, well, um, you didn't specify what it means for the grant to be funded. Right. I'm like, well, I, I thought it meant like if the state offered them the grant, he's like, yeah, but the, the district turned it down. There's nothing in your contract that says they have to accept it. There's nothing in the contract that says, you know, they're penalized if they turn it down because it had literally never happened to me before. Cause I, I'd, I've run a lot of grants for a lot of people over the years. And, uh, it didn't occur to me that, that I could win a grant for them and they'd be like, no, it's all right. Pass $5 million. That's good. And so, um, he was like, yeah, you don't really have a case. And I was like, yeah. Oh. He's like, yeah, you should have had me write that contract. If I had written the contract, uh, maybe you'd have another half million in your pocket right now. I said, that's a good point. I'll, I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the advice. You know? And, uh, and it's true. Like anytime, anytime there's, you know, something serious, um, you know, business wise or something like that, it's really worth, um, having a, a real lawyer do it instead of you doing it yourself. And I don't even know, like, honestly, if he would have picked up on that, but I think he would have done a better job, like actually specifying the terminology and specifying like what it means for it to be funded. And so there, there's actually a good chance that if he had written it, um, then uh, we would have had a case if nothing else. And, uh, Overall, though, like I've done a pretty good job writing contracts. Like I've never had people weasel out of a contract successfully, you know, other than that time, arguably. But at the same time, like it had just never occurred to me that somebody would just be like, no, pass. I'm good. So uh, if if the grant funds, then they'll pay. And, you know, it was just on that, you know, on that first part. And uh, and so they're trying to argue it did not fund. And therefore, we do not have to pay you. You know, logical implication. Real life, half million dollar mistake on my part. So, yeah, yeah, true story. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, you've got a new Zybooks up. Uh, the Zybooks is due next. Uh, I don't know, check the date. I don't remember the exact date that I put up for it, but it will be on logical implications. I think it's due on Friday at either noon or midnight. And it's check on ch check on Canvas, and it's on this topic. And so. <clears throat> It's a very important topic, computer science, law, argumentation, real life, everywhere. And so understanding if then's work is, is super important. So uh, let me just check Discord and see if there's any questions. They played me like a fiddle. They did me dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And what's funny is that my uh, my roommate in college ended up working for the guy, which was hilarious because he, he would get a uh, he would get uh, Christmas cards every year from the uh, from the superintendent that hosed me, you know, and he'd, he would forward them on to me. This guy's name was Joe Farley. I think he, he was at Oceanside at the time, and then he moved on to Irvine uh, schools. And he, I'd always get these Christmas cards from my old roommate saying, Merry Christmas from Joe Farley. I'm like, Farley! <laughs> Are you doing scratch this work or just, just as I book? Uh, the plan right now is to do scratch on Friday. So, uh, so Zybooks will be due on Friday. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about ethical systems on Wednesday. Hopefully my machine will be 
back up by then so we don't have to do this peon peasant um setup that we got here dingleberg yeah um we'll be doing we'll be doing ethical systems on <laughs> a teacher named farley joe farley uh it, I don't think that guy had been in the classroom for a long time. Um, yeah, we'll be doing ethical systems on Wednesday, and they'll be starting scratch on on Friday. So, uh, any questions? We're basically out of time. So do any assumptions make it a fallacy? So it's it's actually, um, what makes it a fallacy is when there's two possibilities for the thing that you, you're asserting, right? So if, so if you see that he's carrying his umbrella, there's two possibilities, right? It, it could be it's sunny outside, it could be it's raining. And so you can't conclude from the fact that he's carrying an umbrella that it's raining, right? Because you, you know the rule, if it rains, he carries his umbrella, but you don't know anything about if it's sunny or not. So um, the fallacies come about when there's two possibilities, but you but you you kind of say, oh, it has to be this one. It, you know, it has to be raining because he has an umbrella. Um, and likewise, if it's not raining, if you conclude, well, he must not be wearing his umbrella. Well, uh, again, if it's not raining, he could have his umbrella. He might not have his umbrella. So if you say because it's not raining, he doesn't have his umbrella. That's a fallacy because there's two possibilities. So it's it's when um, it's when there's two possibilities for the situation, but you pretend there's only one. That's the fallacy. Is there Scratch on Mac? It's on a website. Um, you should be able to download a client if you want. But yeah, we, we'll be doing Scratch on Friday. Joe Farley. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Probably a different guy, though. Probably a different guy. All right. That's it for now, guys. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. For now, the only homework is Zyber. Cute. The Infinite Tunnel.